Hello, my name is Ollie Verneville. Welcome to this teaching and learning activity video. Please subscribe to me on YouTube at Teaching and Learning, then you'll get new videos as I upload them. Um, if you have any questions about this video, please email me, oliververnable at gmail.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at IBCoordinator underscore. The activity, the teaching activity for this video is an activity called Class Debate. A class debate poses many questions for teachers and it's something that um, I had at the beginning of my career and in teacher training I've found a lot of new teachers we simply go, oh, we'll make the class have a debate but then you have some problems. The problems being that debates can be dominated by students, um, two or three students in the class which leave other students um, afraid to give their opinion. Also, in a humanities type subject, giving an opinion could be linked to the beliefs of a student and they may not want to air that in class for a worry of people um, you know, taking that and using that against them um, in the future. So what I've done, I've, I've used this structure of a, of a class debate um, which really allows the debate to go from um, nothing um, at the beginning of the class into um, a debate where students have felt that they have um, been fully um, Join, joining in throughout the process and even if um, at the end they're not the ones or twos who agree with the main ideas put in the debate, they've had, a, they've had their say in getting to the formal debate stage of the lesson. So if you'd like to come here. Um, the lesson can be started in many ways. Um, the example I'm giving today is the debate is going to be um, should voting be made compulsory? Now, I can do this in a couple of ways. I can allow students to um, get into groups uh, yes and no. If you'd like to do that, um, put them in yes and no groups, do you agree, yes or no? A good thing to do is if the, the yes group are standing there, you say, okay, for this debate, you're actually going to argue no. So it's a really good skill for students to be arguing um, points that they actually disagree with. Another way I could do is I could take the pressure off the students and I could create the yes group, we agree voting should be compulsory, and the no group uh, saying student uh, voting should not be compulsory. And as I said earlier, that may take away people that the fear of actually saying at a point that they may want to say, but they don't want to be um, linked to that idea because it may be an unpopular one within the class. So the teacher's kind of taking the pressure away from the students there. So if you look here, here's the structure of how I would hold it. The, um, the final part of the debate is here. Um, one way of doing it is setting the room up um, to have a formal class debate. Now, teaching citizenship in um, the UK curriculum and the NYPINS, um, sometimes in a political debate, I can set this up like a, like a chamber. But if I started the lesson here and said, OK, off you go debate, there could either be silence, or there could, either, or, as I said, it could be the one or two dominating, or it could be just a free for all. So here's what I'm going to do, OK? Uh, first of all, um, get the students' this handout. Um, they write in the topic being discussed. And our group's point of view is, so as I said, for this argument, let's say I've told this group that they must say, yes, we agree that voting should be made compulsory. So, first of all, I split the class in half with my yes, no, as I've just said. And secondly, I'm going to put them into pairs. So if you look here, um, I've got my, let's say this is my yes team, and I've got student A and B, and I'm going to say, first of all, student A and student B, you're now going to work in pairs. So student A and B are opening discussions with each other. And, if I could just put this here, student A and B, they said yes, and what they're going to do is get the main ideas for yes, voting should be compulsory for their own debate, and they're going to start thinking, well, what about people that say no? And this will help them in, in the actual formal debate because they'll be ready to counter-argue the claims of the other side. So. For differentiation, what I might do as a teacher, what I can do as a teacher, is prepare some bullet points before the lesson. And this is going to help students who might find it hard um, to think of ideas. So, you can clearly see here, I've given five ideas for yes, six ideas for no. Now, it's not simply doing the work for the students. They can't just read my ideas here. They've actually got to use examples from these main ideas. So this is here to help students to actually give them a hook to get the debate started. So in pairs, what I'm going to do is ask students, maybe for their um, two strongest points from there, as to say why, yes, we should vote. Give them five, whatever, five, ten minutes to do that. Then, in the next stage of the debate, so now they've got their two ideas there and some thinking about the other side. Now, 
they're going to go into groups of four on the same side. And in their group of four, they've got to come up with the two strongest ideas that they have. So if I move the tables now, A and B already, you know, these could be students who aren't going to put their hand up, who aren't going to join in, but already in pairs, they've had their say. And so have students C and D. Remember, they're on the same side. They, this side of the room will say yes, voting is compulsory. So A and B, filled this in, meet up with C and D who filled this in. Now, there could be four different ideas there. There could be three um, if one's overlapped or even two. And what I've got to do in this stage is come up with the top two. So now they're actually deb debating amongst themselves even though they're on the same side of the, of the debate. So you're allowing all students, this is now going on, I've got 16 students in my class, because you know the maths is very nice, I've got a group of four here now, and four here now, this is a yes team, voting should be compulsory, and we've got the no side there. So I've now got four different debates going on um, in my classroom. And at the end of it, we've now got two ideas for the main strongest um, points of the, um, the start of debate, okay? And over here now, they've done the same for yes, and they also have their two strongest ideas. They're ranking the ideas already. And then what happens in part three, as a half class. So what happens now is this four becomes an eight. And what they're doing now is they're getting ready. The final stage is what they're gonna do is they're going to come up. They're now working as a team. They're now gonna come up with their top two, their front two um, beginning arguments for yes, voting should be made compulsory. So they're there now in a big group activity. The desks will be set up like that, and they will hopefully be sharing ideas, agreeing with each other, um, count, um, backing their ideas up. As I said, some of them from the, what the teacher's done at the start to get the debate going. So, as a half class, we've now got our two strongest ideas, our arguments there, and as I said, we've been thinking about counter arguments to the opposition's possible points. So. The yes side have also been thinking, well, what if they say this? What if they say that? How can we counter argue? Okay? Then my yes team here will decide two speakers to start off the debate. Okay? Um, and you can that could be done through voting, that could be done through the teacher, that could be done through volunteers, however you would like to um, do that. Um, and then what happens is we then start the formal debate. So if you open it up again, the class, they're in their groups, the tables are now moved back. So we've got two lines um, facing each other, and um, you, the teacher, now is the speaker of the house, or the chair of the debate. And what you can do, uh, you'll decide, um, usually what I've always done is decide that the, the, the yes, or the people agreeing with the statement start off. Um, and let's say we've got student um, C and student F, they are going to start our debate. And what they're doing is, they're talking about the main two ideas that have been agreed, from, agreed by half the class, going from pairs into fours into half the class. Now we've got our two speakers now who are going to start the debate. They're going to give their opening statements and arguments and examples to back it up. And at that same time, you, the teacher, could be at the whiteboard, um, and you can make notes of the main ideas. And what that does is that helps students who can't maybe remember them, who can look at the board and say, well, you said this, however, I believe that. Two speakers say yes, two speakers say no. And then how you want to um, go on the debate there is you can open it up, um, you can get people to agree and disagree. And then from that, you can get um, students to start secondary points hands in the air, or you could have the two speakers to allow people to speak. You as a teacher, remember you've got your um, already planned points. You as a teacher could intervene if it's dying down, and you could say, but what about this point, and get the debate starting up as well. So even though maybe I'm student G, maybe you know in front of the class, normally um, I find it hard to speak. So even though I might not at start, but yeah, I'm going to now be leading this, what's happened is, I've had my say once as a pair, once as a four, and then as a half class. So I've, I've been in three different stages of the, of the debate. And what I've done is I've taken ideas from others. I've listened, in this example, 
So the idea is represented by seven other people. So I'm not going into the class um, debate with nothing to say. Um, and it might be that I actually disagree with everything, but it's a key skill to argue opinions we, we, um, or justify opinions that are not their own. What I like to do then, after we um, have our debate, you know, see, um, go as long as it stays alive, and as a teacher, please throw in prompts. Um, I then like to say to the class, okay, now what I'm going to let you do, you've heard both sides of the story, and we're going to have a vote now, but I'm, allowed, I'm going to allow you to have a free vote. I, from the start, have told you to say yes, voting should be compulsory. I've told you to say no, but now, at the end of class, I'm going to open it up as a free vote. Now, you could do that, hands up in class, or you could have a ballot box, um, you could split the class and have a ballot box, um, and then show the results at the end of the class. So, um, just to reiterate learning outcomes, that um, people um, are using reasons throughout, um, maybe given by the teacher, but also you allow them to have their own. They're uh, feeling more comfortable and confident in speaking in small groups, going into large groups. Students are justifying ideas, whether or not they're their own, um, or maybe ones that um, have been given by the teacher. And at the end, that should hopefully build their public speaking um, confidence up, and then they can um, speak in front of the whole class. But the key to this class debate is to structure pairs into fours, into half a class, and then put it out to the open floor. Okay, thank you for listening. Goodbye.